These are five crazy helpful soccer tips I wish all players knew. If you want to be a better player, watch this video all the way to the end. If you don't know about me, I used to be a huge underachiever, but through obsessive self-improvement, I found my success. Earned a college scholarship, played for my national futsal team, a YouTube channel with over 100 million views. I've helped players worldwide, and I'd love to help you improve faster and achieve more. In this tutorial, I want to give you a few tips on shooting. So number one, when you have a chance to take a shot in the game, take it. Don't hesitate. Don't make the pass instead and regret it. If you know it was a good shooting opportunity, I want you to take it. I'd rather you take it and miss than be hesitant, doubt yourself, and give that opportunity away. Okay, you'll learn much quicker. You'll become much better. So want to take your shots, want to get them off. Every opportunity you have, take the shot. Also your mentality, when I'm about to shoot, I can't be thinking about everything that could go wrong. Missing the net, the goalkeeper saving it, everyone yelling at me, the defender coming to tackle me, okay? All you can focus on is being present and focusing on your shooting technique. So let's talk about technique. First of all, before we talk about power and accuracy, get your shots on target. If you're trying to blast it as hard as you can, you're always missing the net, it doesn't matter how hard you can kick the ball. So you have to get it on target and you'll learn what it takes. That's why you're out here at the field practicing. But sometimes you might be off balance when you're shooting. Sometimes the ball is stuck in your feet. Sometimes it's on your right, on your left. You have to figure out how do I get it on target consistently. And once you can do that, then you can start adding more power. So how do you generate power? Well, first I want you to think about your foot technique. Make your foot strong. Lock your ankle, your toes are down. If you're hitting with your laces, even if you're using the inside or the outside of your foot, okay, you want that flexed foot and what I like to call pure technique. So if I'm hitting that ball and my foot is going weak, like that through the shot, it's gonna be a weak shot. You wanna keep your foot flexed, your ankle flexed, everything nice and strong through the ball. That's the first step to power. Second is the speed at which you produce this motion, okay? So the slower I do this, the less power I'm gonna have on my shot. The quicker I can do that with good technique, good foot technique, the more power I'll generate. So foot technique, speed of your swing, and also the range of your swing. I can generate more power from a bigger backswing and a bigger follow through. If I just have a little backswing and a little follow through, it's really tough for me to generate power. So think about those three things when you're practicing on the field. Accuracy, I really wanna think about guiding the ball with my foot. So what I mean by that is, if I'm trying to put it into that corner over there, I have to push it like that, as you can see, okay? If I wanna push into the left corner, I want to, as I release the ball, I wanna see myself, my foot, my leg, pushing it, guiding it, okay? A lot of us were just like chopping at it. And every time you take a shot, stop and look at your foot. Where was it pointing? Okay, so your foot technique is one thing, then your body positioning. If I wanted to go into that corner, I want my body to finish facing that corner. If my body's ending up like this, then you're probably gonna pull your shot to the side like that. Okay, so accuracy, really think about guiding it, really pushing it there. If you wanna use the inside of your foot or the outside of your foot, I wanna push it there with my foot, I wanna push it there with my body. So those are two things I want you to think about when it comes to accuracy, power, but like I said guys, most important, is you're getting consistent. You're getting the ball on target as often as possible. If you want to improve faster and achieve more this season, use the Soccer Success Planner. It's 100% free. Players all around the world have already used it to improve. You can download it right now. There's a link in the description below. Improving your technique, you must take responsibility for your touches, your dribbles, and your shots. The ball will only do what you tell it to do. And if you can learn to analyze what you're doing incorrectly, you'll improve much faster. So what I mean by that is, say for example, I was shooting this ball and I took a shot and the ball ended up going wide. 
Okay, I need to analyze. The ball only did what I told it to do. It's not the ball's fault. It's not anyone else's fault. It's my technique's fault. So I need to analyze in my head. Okay, I hit it too far on this side of the ball. I followed through too much. My body turned too much. And taking that information, you need to correct it. So instead, I'm gonna try to focus more on this side of the ball. I'm going to make sure my follow through goes forward. And I'm going to make sure that my body control goes forward. Okay, and then the ball will do what you tell it to do. The same thing goes for your touches. If you're controlling it out of the air and you lost possession, that's because you touched the ball on the wrong place or you were too heavy, you were too hard with your technique. Okay, so the ball will only do what you tell it to do. If you didn't like your touch, if it didn't do what you wanted, ask yourself, what did I do incorrectly? Same thing goes for your dribbles. If you tried to do a turn or a cut and the ball ended up over there, rather than here in your path, okay, you need to think, okay, I should have touched more on that side of the ball. I should have got my body around it more. I should have twisted my hips around the ball more. Okay, so the ball will only do what you tell it to do. Take that idea, apply it when you're training by yourself and your technique will improve much faster. I will send the better in one day soccer blueprint to anyone who comments hashtag soccer on this video. So when you're running, it's so important that you're focusing on your breathing because a lot of players when they're running, especially when they get tired, they start to hold their breath. And if you're not breathing, you're not getting oxygen into your muscles. So when you're running, just focus on nice, steady breaths. In through your nose, out through your mouth. And hopefully you can hear me on the microphone here but I'm just breathing nice deep breaths in through my nose, getting good oxygen out through my mouth. Okay. And let's see if I can go for a little sprint here, a little change of direction, get a little more tired. All right, so when you're getting tired here, this is where it's really important. Get lots of oxygen. Keep that breathing steady. So let's say like the ball was out of play and you got a chance to get back into position. You're resting for a second. You're still aware, but you're resting. This is where you focus on your breathing recovery. Okay, real deep breaths. Good oxygen in, good carbon dioxide out. And then the game's on. And now it's a little more steady. It's not as intense with your breathing, but the rhythm is still there. Okay, so like I said, <clears throat> when you're running, so, impor so important that you focus on your breathing. If you're holding your breath, you're not getting good oxygen into your muscles. You're gonna cramp up easier. You're gonna get tired quicker. So focus on your breathing in through your nose, out through your mouth. When you do have the chance to recover, let's say you went for a long sprint or you had to press, you had to tackle, you had to defend with intensity and the ball's out of play or you have time to rest while plays on the other side, you're still staying focused. You're still aware of what's going on, but focus on your recovery. Okay, and one more little thing I want you to think about. You probably see professionals do this all the time. There's a little snot rocket. Just blowing the mucus, the mucus out of your nostrils. Okay, it's tough to have a nice deep breath if you're sucking back mucus. And basically mucus is bacteria. You don't wanna be sucking that back into your body. Your body's trying to get rid of that. So it's okay to spit. It's okay to quickly blow some snot out of your nose. It'll help you breathe better. It's just a little trick. Something I do all the time and you see professionals. Let's take a look at controlling a ball out of the air. You can use your foot, thigh, or chest. Similar to a bouncing ball, think about absorbing the ball and bringing it down to the ground as quickly as possible instead of having a heavy touch that forces the ball to bounce upwards which will take more time to get under control and allow defenders to close you down. Whenever possible, take your first touch into space instead of stopping still. 
Protect the ball with your body and take your first touch away from the defenders. When controlling the ball on the move, push it into your path and get it down to your feet as quickly as possible. When receiving long balls, focus on your footwork. As soon as you realize your teammate is about to play a long pass, get light on your toes and react to the flight of the ball. Move so you can get your entire body behind the ball. Watch the ball with your eyes as you make contact with your foot, thigh, or chest. And if possible, push the ball into space, attacking quickly, rather than stopping it dead and allowing defenders to close you down. One more thing I want you to do, which is super easy, but it will improve your dribbling and your ball control, is just keep a ball with you at home. So if you're just chilling, watching some TV, or you're going to the kitchen, your bedroom, wherever you're going. Just keep a ball in your foot and get tons of touches just living your life. So like I said, if you're just going to the kitchen, you keep that ball with you. Grabbing something out of the fridge, that ball is on your foot. Even if you are going to the bathroom, sit down and uh, keep that ball on your feet. So just doing this simple thing, living your life, just watching TV, watching some soccer games, going to the kitchen, doing your homework, whatever you do. When you get up in the morning, your ball is there. When you go to bed at night, your ball is there. And you're going to get thousands of extra touches just by doing this one simple thing. It's going to improve your dribbling. It's going to improve your ability and confidence on the ball. From moving up divisions to making national teams, players who use the Online Soccer Academy get results. Access elite level coaching and training, become a complete player, make a difference on the field and get noticed when you play. Limited spots available, apply today, start improving tomorrow, link in the description below.